Hey everyone, you're listening to the Breezy Moms Podcast, a weekly show that chronicles the adventures of motherhood. I'm Candace. Now let's start the show. Hey guys, I'm so excited to be here. Welcome back. We are streaming live on digitalstreamradio.com forward slash live stream. I always mess it up. Or as Tom would say, you can go to lift. <laughs> You'll get there. It's fine. I will get there. Okay, I want to get. I want to tell them who you are. So I'm. I just want to pretend to be Tom for a minute. So you can go to digitalstreamradio.com and click on Listen Live. That's what he would say. But as a special <laughs> treat today, because Tom is away and out of studio, I have a special guest producer on the show tonight. Nick. Hi. And introduce yourself. Um, I'm Nick and or Trish. Uh huh. From Gay Talk. Um, I'm just here filling in, house sitting for Tom, and hopefully recording the show. I know. Hopefully it's on. <laughs> hopefully it's actually playing. I'm we. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. Yeah. No. Best. It's it's totally it's totally playing. Like I've I've done this before. Okay. Good. 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 <laughs> See, they only know now because we told them. But if we didn't tell them, they would have no idea. Mm-hmm. No. This is like it's like a cakewalk. You just hopefully press the right buttons and press the little round thing that says record and. Go for it. That's a good place to start. Yeah, the record yeah, button is a yeah. good place. <laughs> so, um, I'm really super excited because we have in studio tonight my sister, my lovely sister, and she will be joining us in a few minutes. And so, so that we can get to that quickly, I'm just going to jump right in to my regular opener. This is where Tom would say, Hey, Candace. Hey, Candace. I have a question for you. I have a question for you. How are the boys? How are the boys? <laughs> All right, you did a good job. <laughs> so the boys are good, as always. And tonight we were leaving. They usually don't pay me any attention when I'm leaving the house. I think we have both had have had enough of each other by 6 o'clock, when I'm, like 7 o'clock They're when like, I'm trying to get out. They're like, bye, bitch. Like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> but my sister came to the house, and I think they got excited because they were going to see her for a little bit. And then she just turned around and we were leaving. And so then they were upset. Aww. And so it's super cute. And part of what it, my sister and I are going to talk about tonight is about family and, and trying to um, work on your family dynamics and, and like keep it fam- familial. I don't know. We're, we'll figure it out. But anyway... It was heartwarming to me when she walked through the door and they were like, Aunt Danica, right? Like, it was just so cool because in the, I don't know, last two years, he wouldn't have known. Like, I'd show him pictures of her and he wasn't really sure who she was. Like, this is Lincoln. (laughs) And it made me feel super bad because it means that I didn't go to see her enough. She didn't come see me enough. It was just, you know, it's a two-way street and I'm not blaming her. And I hope, you know, there's no blame. It's just what it is. Mm -hmm. The same thing happened with me and my nephew. I Mm -hmm. mean, like, I hadn't seen him in probably two and a half years. And then I went up to see him and he was like, Uncle Nick? Yeah, is that what I say? Is that what I should call you? You're like confused because it's like he knows who I am Mm -hmm. because of pictures and stuff. But at the same time, he's like, I don't really know you. I don't really know you. (laughs) But can you help me with my math? Right, right. (laughs) (laughs) But do your job. How old is he? He is six. He's going to be seven Soon. Soon. Yeah. Yeah. The time flies and I, it. He's a chunker. Really? Oh, yeah. (laughs) So he probably looks nine because he's a little heavy. Yeah. He just like, he's so sturdy. Okay. You know, his, his brother, his brother was lanky and tall and he is just like this sturdy little guy. And I'm like, that's the nice way to say it. He's a sturdy little guy. (laughs) So I will just tell you, you have to, you have to be careful and mindful the way, the words you use when you talk about him, even when he's not there, because it will have an effect on how you treat him when he, when you're around him, even if you don't mean to. Like words have a really strong, um, they're really strong Mm -hmm. and they, 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 words make, make reality. Yeah. And I only say that because you compared him to the older brother and you said like, oh, he's long and lanky and your voice sounded differently. And and he knows that. Right. This right. little this little nephew knows that everybody talks about the older brother and then everybody says that he's sturdy or whatever word. Choice well, is. They also have different dads. Oh, OK. So there's the, oh, there's, there's that a, element. Added so, yeah, yeah. We, ha- we have that family dynamic, too. Yeah. Where, right. Like lots she, of people involved. She visited um, our fam- like our family, but the part of our family that looks like like kind of looks like me they were like oh where's danica and then whenever i visit like another part of the family 
they're like, where's Candace? They're, they're like more interested in the other sister. So it, it's like, you know, how they relate to, to each of us. And we're like, so we both get upset. Like, oh, we're not good. I'm not Yeah, good I'm enough. here now. I'm yeah. the one who's here now. Yeah. What about me? So whenever we see like our dad's mother, she's always like, how's Candace? And I'm like, I'm here right now. You don't like me? Am I not good enough for you? And so it's so just hard. like, oh. So it, it happens all the time with us. <laughs> But that's really where, again, words matter. And you think, I think you think about like when people are not around and you're just saying things and it's funny and you make jokes and whatever. And I'm not at all trying to come down on you. I'm talking to myself. Oh, no, you are. You're you're taking me, you're taking me, (laughs) take me for a ride right now. It's totally, (laughs) no, because I know that we do it. We do it. It happens to us, especially because there are only two of us. And then I hear that we do it to my, my kids, right? We always talk about, um, Lincoln as being the, like he's super big and he's super tall. And we talk about how small Emery is and Emery is still 75th percentile, but we're like, Oh, Oh, only moms say things yeah. like that. Right. <laughs> only moms know. But he looks small compared to how big Lincoln is. And we hmm. always put the positive, like it's always, oh, he's so big. He's going to be so good at this, so good at sports or whatever when the time comes. And we're like, oh, but Link- but Emery is so small, right? Like he's, oh, he's tiny. Oh, he's not growing as fast as Lincoln did. <laughs> he's not, he's wearing clothes now at two that Lincoln wore at 15 months. Like why I know that and why I would feel the need to say that out loud is just going to hurt his feelings. And if I don't stop doing it now, I'm probably going to keep doing it. He's eight. He's 12. He's 15. You know, you grow up, you're 30 and you're just like, um, well, it's funny because I'm, older one. I, I've always been bigger than my older brother. Really? Yeah. So like he hated it. Yeah. My husband has that too. Like I don't hated, know he hates it. it, but his baby brother is way bigger than he is i remember when i first met him his brother and sister this is how we get off track off topic although we're we're talking about family so it's on topic (laughs) it plays a role it Mm -hmm. plays a role i remember when we first met when uh james and i first started dating he said we were in college and he says oh my brother and sister came i think i want to say like dave Chappelle or somebody came to our school like to perform Mm -hmm. and so he invited his brother and sister they were like 12 and I guess, 14 or something to come and see the show. She was like, oh, they're sleeping in the room. I'm just going to go and grab something. And so I walk in the room and I was like, oh, where's your brother? He said he's right there. But there was like this dude sleeping diagonally across a futon hanging off the edge. And I was like, I thought you said your little brother was here. Yeah. Like this is a full grown man Mm -hmm. child. (laughs) bigger than a futon i was like how is he 12 <laughs> like he is so so tall and i just was not prepared for it well it's super weird because like my nephew is his dad is 6 11 oh wow the wow. oldest one so he towers over everybody and he's wow. like straight up model status oh my god and then my other nephew his dad is like five two. <laughs> he's just not. He's like he's just the complete he's opposite. Just regular. He's literally the complete opposite, and like you can see it in both of them. Like you can see how the genetic makeup literally created who they are, oh and God. they're just one hundred percent different. Oh my God. That's I mean, insane. and they're both adorable, and I love them, and they're yeah, both yeah. so cute. But I'm just like, yeah, you're that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, there's no if ands or buts about yeah, that. No, nope. but I mean they have different dads. But I think it's the same thing. The same thing can happen with same same parents, right? Same mom, same dad. You have kids that look so totally different. And milkman baby. Yeah, everyone. Right? <laughs> my sister used to always say that I was the milkman's baby. Oh That's what they used Your to say sister, to me. I've never said that. Other people said it. Listen, listen. Let's not get into that here. Uh oh. I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway she so always said i was adopted all the time oh, they said that to me too i think so <laughs> and it didn't help that like she had more time with our dad so she's like yeah you didn't really go that's terrible family. that's yep. terrible i guess we're just jumping into the show how are the boys is over and let's just <laughs> wait no we really didn't off. talk about how the boys are <laughs> they missed auntie they but missed. how are they how was the they're week good they're good they um emery this morning he said to me i said oh do you want some chocolate milk Wait, before that, I'm trying so hard to finish. I don't know how hard I'm trying, but I think I'm trying really hard to finish, like put a pin in nursing and breastfeeding 
and I'm down to one. Mm-hmm. First of all, don't judge me. Okay? Your child is 72 months, okay, and you're still <laughs> breastfeeding. No, he's not. Your he's 24 months. If your kid months. can stand up and breastfeed, you're done. Whatever. <laughs> Listen, extended breastfeeding is a thing, okay? Mind your business. So the point is that I'm down to one a day, and even in the last maybe week, I've only done once. So I'm really close to being done. And to this morning, I didn't want to wake up. He wakes up at five o'clock and I didn't want to get up and go to the kitchen at five o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right. So he he looks like, oh, first he looks at me and he smiles and he just shakes his head. Mm -hmm. Like, give me Mm -hmm. the tip. Mm -hmm. And I go, no. And he goes, (laughs) ah. He's creating a complex he's going to have it's crazy. when he's 30-something. So it's it called was, being a parent. Whatever. It's called, I need five more minutes of sleep. So I um, I nursed him, and then I was like, all right, this is over. We got to stop this. And then I said, do you want some chocolate milk? And he goes, yeah. And so he jumps out of the bed and runs to the door, and he goes, mom, come on, let's go. And I was like, listen, first of all, don't talk to me like that. Second of all, when did you start putting all these words together <laughs> in this kind of demanding don't act like your father. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> it was it was insane. So uh, it was just this point where I where I realized that he is really a little person. He's a little person, and because I do daycare, I have lots of I have lots of kids in the house, and I have another little boy who's the same age. And it's so hard not to compare. And the the general developmental thing I I I've seen on. Um, what is that thing called? The parenting website, whatever it's called. It's like two words, like um, two word sentences at two. Like one, they say one word when they're one, two word sentences at two, three word. Like they start stringing longer right. sentences together the older they get. And so this other little boy I take care of is almost two. And he does a lot of these two and, and three word sentences that Emery doesn't do. But Emery does a lot of these bigger things like come on let's go or like mommy watch this or did you see that like he does a little more of these longer things and less of the shorter ones so as usual i'm worried that something is off or something is behind can i ask like as an example what the other child says versus like come on mommy let's go yeah so the other child will say like oh the balloon popped oh emery calling oh like um my turn my turn <laughs> like he says all the things you expect of them but he says them very clearly and right when they're supposed to be said mm-hmm. right there's not it's not just like random and he doesn't do a lot of babbling he does a lot of like saying what he means at the moment um and what's cute with them because they're basically frenemies is as most kids in the same <laughs> in the same age group are is uh, I was changing his diaper and Emery calls his name and he was on the changing table and he goes yeah and then I was <laughs> like, waited and then he looked at me and he said Emery calling and he started rolling off the changing table I was like listen Emery can wait we have something to take care of right no, now <laughs> clearly Emery is more important like uh it was really, really super funny um, because they're always at each other, but they are always, mm-hmm. you know, they're just all about each other, too. So. so anyway, and then the other thing that Emery did today, we were at the library and we have neighbors who live across the street and they showed up at the library at the same time. And Emery from across the room jumped up and ran across the room to hu- to hug this little girl like everybody was looking because it was a it was very much like if you hadn't seen your good friend in a long time, you just right nobody else matters part the seas i'm going to get her right and he gave her this big hug and it was long i was just like you have your own feelings and your own friends you better watch out for him (laughs) and she's she's four actually she's the same age as lincoln but he loves her he loves her (laughs) Mm -hmm. and he knows her name and whenever we see her then for like two days whenever he sees a little girl with brown hair He thinks it's her, like until he sees her face. But he's like running across parking lots. Emma, 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 his arms are like, dude, come back. Yeah, no, he's crushing. It's It's happening. Real crush. Yeah. So he's good. Lincoln is good. (laughs) (laughs) Move on, move on. I'm not ready. Um, I always, I remember I spiral. So I'm like. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I'm watching it happen. (laughs) Like, I'll get you on track if I need to. (laughs) 
So Lincoln is good, and we have been we've been having a really good time at daycare. I was worried, and I think James is worried. We're all worried because I have so many kids now. <laughs> I like doubled enrollment, and it's been really great. I think there was a lot of worry, like that I couldn't handle it, and and I really can. So it's That's been amazing. really it's really nice that without without um. Without, so I had an assistant for a week and I think that it caused me a little more stress than, than help because I didn't realize, I, I forgot that when you have an assistant, you have to tell them what to do, which actually just gives you more work, more work. Right. And so there was a, an amount of onboarding. Sorry, silence. Technical no, no, no. It's 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 fine. Okay, Keep it's on. fine. So there was a there was a level of onboarding that I should have done to prepare for the assistant that I didn't do, and so it made it tough to get through the week. And so when that didn't work out, I decided I would just give it a go. Like I think I can do this, mm -hmm. and it was just easier for me to 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 move at my own pace. And I had a conversation with the kids, especially because they're they're three older kids, three, four, and six, and I was like, hey. We are all in this together. <laughs> we move as a team, as a unit. Nobody can go outside before everybody can go outside. So if your shoes are on, kindly help somebody else put on their shoes. That gets us all out the door faster. And don't ask me how many, like how much longer before we go outside. Because every time we go outside, first it's, first it's diaper, then it's wash hands, then it's shoes, then it's line up at the door. Like, Every single time. Right. Don't skip any steps. Don't ask me any questions about it. And we will be all good. And so it was just that kind of like realizing that I'm in charge of how the day goes. Right. My, you know, with these sort of given tantrums and the way that kids behave, but I'm in charge of how the day goes and I can set the pace of the day and I don't have to compare myself to anybody else's pace or what anybody else is doing or whatever. If I say we're going to watch a show that I can, so I can make lunch, then we're going to watch a show so we can make lunch. And everyone's <laughs> like, on board. Yeah. And everybody's on board and it's going to be fine. Like, so it has allowed me to um, have my days run a little bit better so that I can sort of enjoy the reason why I do this work, which is so that I can be at home with my kids. Right. I can be home with my kids while taking care of these other kids, which means I get to see Lincoln and Emery during the day all day and sort of do things with them the way I want. And so they're like, when you leave, bye. Right. That's true. That's <laughs> yes. true. Although, although remember, I don't, you don't remember. So, although I was trying to get Lincoln to go to camp a couple weeks ago and he didn't want to. And I think it's because he thought we were having big fun at the house without him. So I and I kept thinking, all right, any day now he's going to be like, mm, maybe I should go to camp. And he was like, OK, what what are we doing tomorrow? So it's been really cool. And now he has um, picked up. He's like owning that. He's the assist. He thinks he's the assistant. So I hear him now. We don't run in the house. <laughs> You're sitting too close to the TV. <laughs> like, he told us the little boy yesterday. He was like, well, this is my house. And at my house, this is how we do it. <laughs> Like, At least you don't have to pay them. <laughs> Saving money. I know. Yeah. So every once in a while I have to remind him, okay, that is true. And still we need a nicer tone when we say that. <laughs> oh my God. So he's totally this little cool, this little kid. But he also said to me the other day, he said, he said, mom, is Emery a robber? And I was like, a robber? Why would he be a robber? And he goes, a robber is a baby who can walk and talk. Wait, I was what? like, you mean a toddler? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. So it's just fun. He's still, he's like still learning and, and he is putting things together and like trying really hard to be grown up, especially because the little boy we, who's in our program is six. So he's trying really hard to keep up with a six year old. He's only four, but he's the same size as this kid. Mm -hmm. So, and that's a little bit of he's big and this kid's a little bit small. But so he's he's working really hard at it. So how many kids do you have right now? Six, including mine. So how many do you think you can actually handle before bringing on somebody that's not your son? Um, I can only have six. Oh, so I'm at the top. So I can have six. And then when school starts, you can have three more kids who are only there before and after school. Oh, so that see. means they're there for like one or two hours in the morning and then one or two hours in the afternoon. Is that because it's out of your house? 
Yeah, because it's in my house. Yeah. Oh. So I'm not running a center with like 30 kids. I'm, I just have it in my house and it's just me. So my license is for six kids. And during the school years, it's three. I mean, it's six full time kids and three before and after age, before and after care school age kids. So someone over six years old. Hmm. So I'm at the I'm at the, the peak right now. <laughs> Can you imagine if they were all yours, all six of them? No, no. no. And I don't know how people do it. They do. They do. I was at the library today. So we're, so I haven't taken any trips with all six kids yet. But today I only had five because one child goes to their grandparents' house. And I thought, okay, we can, we can try this. We were going to walk to the library. We stopped at the, park and then walked to the library had lunch at the library and then came back and we made it we made it i How think the library hmm, maybe a mile really i mean maybe a mile feels cool. pretty far yeah. it feels like about a for little girl feet. you got to get on that mic for little feet <laughs> there you oh, go you get closer. <laughs> yeah so the littlest ones were in the smallest ones were in the stroller oh, okay. and so the walkers were three four and six oh, okay. and we took a break at the park and then once we were at the park, we were only three blocks away from the library. So it was it was OK. I think it was OK. I mean, it was blazing hot today. I don't know that today was the day. I think in the future, as it gets cooler, like before it's cold, but when it's cooler, it doesn't feel like when you're walking in the heat, pushing a hundred pound stroller with two kids and backpack and, and everybody's back. Just and leave the stroller. Nobody. Wa- <laughs> but you can't. You, you no, I can't. mean, like, just like. Walk away. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> you and Tom. Terrible. We're gay men. What oh do you want? Oh my God, you can't. <laughs> you can't leave them behind. But we had a good time. And because we're a big group, I, I actually got matching hats for them. So I have Smart. two hats that match for the two older kids and then three of these lime green hats for the the little ones. And so we present as a group and we got lots of compliments today for being such a big group and for them not like... I always knew where they were. They were, with, you, you know? know, I'd have everyone on like a string, a string. Like, a leash. like we, we have to be all together. Right. All together. Come back. Come back. I, I well, can't imagine. That's like, the good thing about these hats. So as long as they keep on their hats, as long as they keep on their hats. And then the other pieces, I'm always in these spaces that are mostly white. So it's very easy for me to find my two kids. And then the other kids have on the hats. So oh it's pretty, God. I mean, it's real. It's real. It's real because there was a moment where I lost track of Emery oh and I was like, Emery, and everybody in the room went, oh, I think he's over here. Right? <laughs> it's, like, it's terrible. Oh oh but it's God. fantastic. It's, I mean, yeah. it's, it's when these things work oh in your favor. Right? Like, it's not very often that you're like, oh, yay, I'm winning. Right. <laughs> but in these in these situations in Westville, <laughs> I'm winning. So. Anyway, and then it's nice. The The community here is really small, for better or worse. So when I go to the library, I run into a bunch of people. Somebody I used to work with, some a neighbor from across the street, people I saw, used to see when I was going more regularly. So it's a nice, yeah. it's a nice little community. Hmm. Can't complain. And the kids were excited. And because there was so much wa- wa- walking, they all went to sleep at nap time. Wonderful. Yes. I love nap time. I miss yes. nap time. Oh my God, you should try it. Oh no, I do nap. Oh yeah. <laughs> but I mean like your daily nap. Like I miss my like nap time. Like why oh, don't we? We should do should... siestas. Yeah. Like why is it that like at, I don't know, two o'clock after lunch, I'm like, why can't I take a half hour nap and not be judged for oh, it? Oh, I definitely do it. And <laughs> I don't allow anyone to be a, like judging that. Don't judge me. I'm doing it. <laughs> I have a 16 hour day. I'm taking a nap right now. Oh, there you go. Everyone calls me a cat because all I do is nap. And (laughs) I'm like, oh, it's not my problem. I need a nap. Is the work done? Shut up. Right. right. (laughs) My work is done. I'm taking a nap. All right. Well, let's let's move on into our I I mean, I feel like there's no moving. There's no transition because you're already here. Uh, So anyway, everybody, the voice you've been hearing is my sister Danica, who's in studio today from New York. Um, I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for inviting me. This is like a wonderful experience. (laughs) And this is what my voice sounds like. (laughs) Oh, you didn't know what your voice sounds like. Wait till you listen to it on the recording. I know. It's weird. This is, I'm, I'm really excited to do this and I support my sister in everything that she does. And I'm very excited for her and, and I'm happy that I'm on the show with you. Yay. Thank Thank you so much for being here. So we, I wanted you to come on because like that it's, I, I feel all like um, 
warm inside for you saying that but that's not like a normal thing that we usually talk about with each other like it's not a normal way that we talk to each other and it's only in the last couple years months (laughs) lots of months three hours right (laughs) that we've really sort of turned this corner (laughs) and become more like I would say more expressive I think we've I've always loved my sister I've always cared about her deeply but close but not been close and not been expressive. We're not, or as a family, we're not super expressive. And, you know, like love languages, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Oh, yeah, totally. It, it's not expressing and touching. It doesn't <laughs> like, you know, happen it in doesn't, our family. Not a lot of hugging. And, no. <laughs> like, it's just not a, a An thing. open conversation and about. Open co- yeah. Like, none of that. None of that is a thing. So I wanted to have Danica come on tonight because she has been taking a really strong stance <laughs> in trying... <laughs> <laughs> in trying to remedy that for our family and it has been um really impressive and an awesome site i mean we even have a family cal- google calendar now wait so how so like how are you well, we're gonna yeah we're gonna we're, we're gonna getting in there that. yeah okay. we're getting there we're gonna see how she acts right <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna tell you exactly what she does <laughs> It's so, so I wanted her to come on because I know that she's working really hard at it. And I feel like other families might go through this. I, you know, I know families in general, my husband's family, other families that are really tight. Like they talk all the time. My husband's on a group chat with his brother and sister and they talk probably 10 times a day, every day, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. That's not my mom. My mom said to me the other day, I saw a missed call from James at night. I don't know, it was like 10 o'clock at night. She was like, I saw a missed call from him, but I didn't know what it was about, and I was scared, so I didn't answer. <laughs> oh my I was God. like, what? Like, I could have been dead in the street, and <laughs> yeah, you were seriously. scared. But that's what she thought. She thought I was like, why else would he be calling her? Yeah. And so, or, <laughs> the, you know so what? she didn't answer. She, like, that's happened between us, too. She's like, you called me. Is everything okay? But, like, the next like, day. Like, when like, but it, via text, not right, a phone call. Right, okay. No, yes. Email. She waits and emails me the next day, like, oh, you called me. Is Are you okay? <laughs> I She's called like you so like scared. 12 hours ago. I just wanted to say, say hi. hi. Right? Yes, I call does, her and she's like, what happened? I'm yes, like, no. That does not happen in our family at all. And then my sister got a new car. She she got a new... I didn't know she had a new car. Anyway, I came home actually from recording the show one night late. And there was a Jeep... What did, a, like a Jeep Wrangler in front of my house. And the first thing I thought was, oh no. Like, what happened? Like, I thought it was my sister's car and that something was wrong. It wasn't her car, but the fact that I didn't think, oh, she just came to visit. Yeah. But instead, like, somebody must have died. Yes, yeah, something extreme. You know what's like cra- an extreme. Yeah, no, it's crazy to me because, like, you know, for a long time, my siblings weren't very, you know, we weren't all very close. Me and my sister got really, really close in the past, like, probably eight years or so. But these are the people that you grow up with and spend so much time with and they know so many so many things. So you should you should keep them close. Yeah, yes. because otherwise <laughs> those things yes. <laughs> like get out. Uh-huh. Yes. So I wanted her to come on and talk and and let's talk about it because I feel like for those families that are super tight, like good for you. But for those of us who are out here struggling and on one hand either want our families to be tight or find ways to sort of insert themselves into other families mm-hmm. to get because every we're 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 creatures of love and t- like we are those kind of creatures that need family and need community and need love and touch and all of those things and if you're not getting it from your bio family you like find you you either find another place to get it from or you're like super depressed and by yourself right so for those people who are not in that place and they're instead trying to figure out how to find it with their own family i thought this would be a cool conversation so danica tell us a little bit about what i do what you're doing (laughs) so um over the last like year i would say i'm gonna say six months to a year um i've been working with each of our family members well when i say work with each i mean um there are four there are four sisters which consists of my mom and her three sisters Mm -hmm. and so they all had children and between all of those children there's 13 of us and that and i included my son um because i had him when i was really young so he's at the teenage age now with which is with 
um, our younger cousins. Um, so there's 13 of us and it's a lot of people. And so trying to keep track of all of them is extremely hard. Um, so over the last maybe six months, I've been texting, emailing, group chatting, Snapchat, Snapchatting, calling each and every one of them and trying to, um, kind of create a, a, bond with each and every one of them and try to pull us all together so that we um, can grow as a family. And it has taken, it's, it's a little difficult because everyone kind of has their own life. Um, And they look at your phone call and then they're like, I'll, yeah. Email them tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Like, what's <laughs> yeah. this about? Uh, yeah. What is this? So, um, some some people, it's well received because some of us are closer than others, mm-hmm. um, and then some of our cousins are. It they're like, what's this about? So, um, it's it's a journey uh, trying to kind of. Re- get to know your cousin which is kind of strange because it's family but it's been a journey and it's it's amazing to find out all of the things that your your cousins like think about feel and um it's it's hard but it it has brought it it has brought us closer together um in the last six months and um it's it's just to help us grow as a family and become um more uh um just be bonded like and a unit like a family yeah, a strong unit. family unit um, so what's what sparked this like why all of a sudden six months ago where you're like we need to reconnect um so i started um i was thinking about um having a like a family summer home and i had spoken to like two of my cousins about it and they were like, that's an excellent idea. And so um, I'd sp- spoken to my sister about it. And she's like, it's a great idea. So I said, I feel like this should be between the 13 of us. Like, this should be for all of us. It shouldn't just be for me or you or us, just the two of us. Um, so I spoke to all of my cousins. Um, and the ones that, you know, some of it was well received. Like, yeah, this is an excellent idea. And some of it was like, how are we going to come up with this money? And how pragmatic. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like, what, what? So, um, I sat on it and I thought long and hard about how would I be able to bring 13 people together to come up with, to come up with the money to buy a like summer home. And, a lot of it, a lot of the issues that I came up with was having the ability to trust someone with your money, mm-hmm. which can be difficult. Um, is definitely difficult. It is very difficult. And um, between the 13 of us, the youngest person is 13 and the oldest is 35. So we have like, you know, um, a range of ages where someone isn't working or someone has a full time job or someone is in between jobs. So we don't um, have je- all of us. We don't have like a income where it's like, OK, yeah, sure. Yeah. Here's five thousand right. dollars. Just take it. Whatever. Take it, you know, um, we're not all old enough to, to be at that level. Um, Honey, I'm so, 30 and I still. No. Right. I- <laughs> yeah. So um, what I what I realized was that this isn't something that will happen sooner. It'll it'll most likely happen later. Um, so I realized that in the meantime, it's more what what could um, help the trust factor is if we work on building trust within each other and In relationship not with yeah. um, not necessarily financially, but building trust with each other on an emotional and spiritual and um, mental level. And that's kind of like what um, plunged me into this. We all have to love each other and hang out and you know, all that stuff. Um, and uh, a few books that I've been reading over the last like, couple of months it is it talks about um how the black community is a little uh separate from each other um and it goes back to like the slave slave slavery period and i felt like um it's important that us as a as a black family should um be active in keeping our values strong Mm -hmm. and working together to build that value so it is, I think it's very enlightening and, and I try to talk, I talk to everyone about it because I feel that it's really important in the black community to do that within their family unit, as well as within the black, the black community and society in general, but also starting with your own family unit, um, because it will then eventually kind of spread across the world where as 
black society, you'll be able to um, uh, feel less oppressed or or get or get the things done that you wish to happen mm -hmm. within um, America, American society in general. Um, so it's been a journey. It's been an amazing journey. Um, you know, I'm constantly messaging, you know, our each of my cousins to see how they're doing. And um, I try to promote um, unity amongst all of us. Uh, we do Oh my God, she's going to start celebrating Kwanzaa. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I will. I love it. Don't don't the, even get excited. I will. No, I'm I'm I say that in jest, but it's uh, it's real. And that thing you're talking about with slavery, it's called generational trauma, right? This this idea that families were like split apart and torn apart, and people don't understand why sort of the black community at large and families in general aren't as tight as they should be, and they don't ex they don't accept that this sort of generational trauma is a real thing that can like if if you're if you don't know your father your mother doesn't know her father her father doesn't know like that's not because black people are terrible and they don't want to be in families and they don't want to have families it's because like families are torn apart right. right it's not like a yes there are some jerks and there are some assholes everywhere but it's not a black thing that fathers aren't around and actually there's a um I don't want to get onto that, but there's a, there is some research that's out talking about that there's, there are far more black families that are together and black fathers that are involved in their children's lives, whether uh, actually married to the mother or not. But nobody wants to talk about that. And it's much more sensational and much more like speaks to the, the narrative that the country and the world is trying to put on black people right. that they're not there and they're, they're gone and they're not yeah. active, but it's not actually true. If you look at the actual, the actual data, that's the biggest problem though. People don't look at that. No. They look at what is the spectacle mm -hmm. the spe and, yeah. and the spectacle is always and they the watch spotlight the same yeah. shows that say the same lines mm -hmm. every single time. What about black on black crime? Like that's not a thing, you know, like <laughs> those, yeah. those kind of um, catchphrases and those ideas are said over and over and over again until they become reality, even when they aren't. Exactly. So that, I mean, I didn't mean to go off on a tangent, but that has a, but it also plays a big role. It plays a yeah. big role. It plays a big role. And my, she and I were talking earlier, I think about some, some, you, you start psychoanalyzing. And I think part of, part of what contributed, contributes to our family being a little more disjointed is we have like four sisters who grew up in three different homes, mm -hmm. right? So you've got people who started out together when they were little and then didn't get back together until they were adults. And wow. so you've got this sort of idea that you are family, but actually I don't really know you or you only remember me from when I was six, Exactly. which is how I feel about some of these cousins in this group, right? Like yeah. I used to live with aunts and I used to live with cousins, but when I see them now and they're, they have their own apartments and they live in a different city from their parents. Like, I don't see them that way. I see them as five-year-olds. So so how as, a, as mothers would you then take this whole conversation that we're having and instill that in your children so that you know that these connections will be maintained and you can move forward with them? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm I. there's a thing that I say all the time with, with Lincoln um, that I'm probably saying to myself when I say it to him, but I tell him all the time, Emery is your only brother. He's your only brother. You have to treat, you have to show people how to treat him. And so if you yell at him in front of these kids in our house, you grab things from him, you push him down. Why can't they, right? Like you can't do that to him and then turn around and yell at somebody when they do that to him. So I just constantly say, I say, Lincoln, who's Emery? And he goes, my only brother. <laughs> and so like, I've said it so much that that's how he responds, yeah. but it makes me feel like he's, he's hearing me. And mm -hmm. I'm just telling him all the time, all the time, especially cause I don't, I'm pretty sure I'm not having any more kids, but still, <laughs> this is your only brother. And this, he's your responsibility as much as he's yeah. mine. Like both of you are my responsibility, but he is also your responsibility. And that's a thing that I, I, I feel like I missed, I missed from my own sister. Definitely. And we have our own story of like, we are, uh, we have same mother and father and grew up in the same house, but I went to high school at 14 in another state and have been gone ever since. Like I didn't live at home. I barely had a bed in the house after 14. Like that's true. Like, <laughs> it was like, Oh, I'm home for, for Christmas. Where am I going to sleep? So under the tree, right under the <laughs> yes. tree. 
<laughs> so we have this uh, a, a bit of a disjointed relationship because when she was going, when we we're both going through those sort of um, teen, like early adult years, we weren't living in the same place in the right. same house and we were off on very different tracks and then she had her baby and that is even a different because i didn't have any kids like Mm -hmm. her kid is 13 and mine is four so she's been like an adult and a parent for way longer forever than i have it feels like forever and (laughs) honey it's gonna be and i feel like i I just became an adult so it's it's all it's weird that's weird so that's how i try to um think about uh, experiences and how i feel about about this thing that we're we're trying to fix like retroactively mm-hmm. yeah you're trying to fix i'm trying to figure out how to start start off on a good foot with that's the that's boys. that's what i do with my son um because he only it's only him with me um he has another brother with his father and his and her girlfriend his girlfriend and um i know that he probably has like single child syndrome kind of thing where you know it's just me i get whatever i want right. i don't have to argue from both sides um, yeah <laughs> yeah and um so uh i guess when his brother came along with um his dad's girlfriend it kind of like threw him into this you know and because because he tells me you know it's is it really my brother it's not from your belly kind of thing i try to you know ex- in to let him know that yes it is your brother um you know but it's important to still you know love him the same that you love you know same yeah. that you would love if love our child if i had one whatever um <clears throat> so uh i do a lot of the same things that my sister does when it comes to um reiterating that this is your family and and your family comes first and you should always protect them and you should always make an effort to uh be in their lives, you know? And so what I did was I created a, a group Snapchat and, uh, and I just got to join. I felt like the old lady who was like, how does this work? I don't, okay, how's she this snapping? She I chat more. I, I text on Snapchat more than I'd snap. I'm the same. Because she doesn't know how to work it. Whatever. So, I mean, well, I'm like holding the thing, the camera's pointing in the wrong direction. Yeah. I had to delete it the other day because I kept getting these snaps of our mom who's just like, what? Oh. And then it was like, st- <laughs> it would freeze at that moment and I couldn't see anything else. So every time I opened Snapchat, it went, what? <laughs> she was convinced Snapchat gave her a virus in her phone. I'm like, you're so old. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> I told her to delete it. I'm she's an like, elder millennial. Yes. I ju- did you watch that show? There's a, there's a stand-up, sorry, sidebar. Hashtag elder millennial. There's some girl, <laughs> some woman on Netflix. Her name is Eliza. And she has a, a stand-up special called Elder Millennial. And it is just my whole life because... I'm a, I don't claim millennial. But I claim are, Z, yeah. Xenial is what I am. It's like 82 to 86 or something is a Xenial where we have a, um, an analog childhood and a digital. I mean, adulthood. I was 87, same thing. Right. And so I, this, all these things, like if it was new when I was in college, I was willing to learn it. But if it was new last year, I like, she still I don't, I don't want now. to. <laughs> anyway, I forced her to be part of it. Yeah, plus I was feeling bad. It it had been open for a while. Look at me talking about it the wrong way. I'm using the wrong terms for these group chats. They had been on this group chat for I don't know how long, and I heard about it, and I was like, wait, what about me? And I told her it's because she refused to download the app app on her phone, and she's like, I can download the app. So then I had one of my younger... (laughs) No, I didn't even do it. She made someone else download it One of my cousins did it for me. So when I had to reinstall it, I was like, "Uh, I don't know what the things are. Yes. So she, we got her, finally got her on Snapchat and gave her a tutorial on how it works. Whatever. Um, so we're oh, there's all we're all in a group chat, and um, so we send snaps to each other. And uh, so if someone isn't with us, they can see what's going on. And it's it's amazing because you still feel connected even mm-hmm. though you can't physically be there. Yep. And I feel a little jealous if I'm being totally honest. She gets jealous, but I get jealous too. Like, but I, why? Because okay, so because so jealousy comes from insecurity, <laughs> right? That's you, so yeah. jealousy comes from insecurity. So this is what happens. Uh, some of us and <laughs> some of us are always with each other, and some of us aren't. So because Candace lives far away, she's not. I don't always, live that far away. Candace, it took me three and a half hours to get over here. Okay, today. whatever. You left late. It, it took me three and a half hours to get over here. It's traffic. That's it was me. hard. It was hard for me. I almost. Where are you coming around. from? I, I'm coming from like Cortland Manor, which is like. 
I don't know, Westchester. across the country, apparently. Whatever. It's Girl, Westchester. Like you the left Hudson. at the wrong time. She left I, at the I wrong time. <laughs> it's a she whole was other in rush story. hour traffic. But still, I get you. I get you. Other, it's a whole other story. So um, what happens is some of us are always with each other as opposed to the others because of proximity. Yeah. You know? So um, when, like, when you see I'll tell you snap, what it is. Go ahead. When you, you see, see a snap? snap that has like a couple of cousins in it, oh, yeah. you're like, oh, what about me? Why can't I be there? Or did this just happen? And I wasn't invited, which I created a Google calendar for our family. It's called our family Google calendar. And <laughs> Simple. So it has all everyone who has like a Gmail is on the calendar. So when they open it, they can see what's happening. Like if there's an event. So, it, you know, you know that you're not going to miss anything not everyone has like jumped on it but i have like if i've been pushing it i've been pushing it i've been pushing birthdays and things that events that are popping up so everyone kind of knows um so whenever you're on the the snapchat like if you're in the group chat you'll see something happening and so when you when you see it you're kind of like i'm not there and i wasn't invited and this isn't you know so it kind of i feel like it pushes pushes the envelope where it's just like you know what's going on so you have to insert yourself there Mm -hmm. you know so it it creates this little jealousy but it kind of like pushes you to feel like you know what i should be there and i'm going to make a point to be there or to Um, ask and find out for for me because i am some distance away like we have to make a plan and part Part of the thing is that nobody in my family is a planner, except for Danica now is all of a sudden a, a calendaring planner. Whatever. But like <laughs> nobody wants to plan or like, or I should say nobody wants to commit to something because you're always like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to be doing that day or how I'm going to feel. And I have to know so that I can wake up in the morning and co- like yeah. come there. Yeah. But if you don't make the plan until five minutes before you go, then obviously I can't. Yeah. I can't attend. So it's so it drives just her crazy. This, so it drives me a little bit crazy. But uh, we we were also talking a couple of weeks ago about taking ownership in that. Right. And and there are other situations where they end up together and they didn't think to call me. They're like, oh, she's probably busy. Oh, she lives far away, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I was sitting in my house. You could have called me. I would have come. But it's it's I have to take ownership that I am not around enough that they think about me like top of mind. You know what I mean? Right. But also you have to take ownership of the fact that you have two kids and to like, just oh, get no. up and go is no, like, I know. Yeah. Difficult, yeah. Yes, I know. But, but still <laughs> my nephews, I can, I was like I, watching that, watching my sister pull that shit together. I was right. like, I've been in the car for a half an hour. <laughs> well, Ryder's pants is, they're off again. So <laughs> like it's, it There's is what it is. I like, <laughs> He's coming without the pants, okay? <laughs> I know. James always says it to me. I'm in the car. I was like, really? All right. We're and still I just in leave bed. him. I leave him there for half an hour while I get all the things. Um, Did so he's you see better. that video on Facebook a couple of, what was it, last week where there was a guy that had to take care of getting the huh? kids ready and for Ray, school? Ray got in the bath. Yeah. I don't remember exactly the names, but yeah, yeah. he was just like, I am never ever let my life la- my wife leave again this is right i right. can't do this <laughs> <laughs> i feel for her like, yeah he, he said i'm never gonna ask again what's taking so long <laughs> that's what it was yeah. right because he ended up <laughs> this is a tangent but it was funny and it keeps coming around because it's hilarious she he, she left early so he had to take the kids and he couldn't find his keys and while he was looking for the keys the baby pooped oh but it was God. like a serious poop so then he had to bathe the baby oh. and because he took off the baby's cl- clothes the preschooler thought it was time oh, for a bath God. so then the preschooler got <laughs> undressed <laughs> and so now everybody's in the bath and he's got to start all over again oh and God. then he finally got them all out but he wasn't he was wearing slippers or like oh he wasn't wearing God. any pants or something like that. <laughs> Yes. It was an it amazing is, It's video. a hot mess. It's a hot mess. Now, I do that for work now with six kids, mm-hmm. right? So that's why I don't usually go anywhere because it's not worth it. Yep. I have to do all of that just to get from inside my house to the backyard to play in the backyard, right? Because everybody has to have a diaper change. Everybody has to wash hands. Everybody has to put on shoes. And I just told James yesterday, it's not even cold. We're not even putting on coats, <laughs> right? We're just walking out in shoes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> just so anyway uh we talked a little bit about if we're, if we're thinking about um 
of like a practical way, a practical guide on how to rekindle family relationships or rekindle family, right? One is decide that you, it's worth doing, right? Like decide that you want to do it and you have some, maybe some goals for your family in the future that you can't possibly get to if you haven't sort of re- reestablished yeah, and a, rooted your family a foundation, a foundation a right cement foundation that i've been working on right and <laughs> right now we're from new york yeah it's, it's like muck but it's, right. it's getting there it's getting there it's still solidifying <laughs> so that's number one number two is we talked a little bit about really really so generally if you ask somebody or you're trying to talk to someone and they sort of brush you off you're like all right fine whatever and then you sort of go your own way and you're just like oh, i'll do it later but if you're at this point where you're really trying to rekindle or like or solidify something you have to decide that you're going to keep at it yeah. right and like that you're not going to let your feelings get hurt by someone brushing you off yes and trust me my feelings have been hurt because <laughs> people have brushed me off these are people who i've changed their diapers mm-hmm. and they've brushed me off yep and i just keep picking at it and picking at it <laughs> and it's just it's, i've seen snaps where she's just in my cousin's face she's like i'm here i'm here i'm here i'm here i'm here yeah and, it <laughs> and it's annoying it's annoying but it also i think i think people expect after a after a point of time right of I, I, to be honest of like disappointment constant disappointment that yes. that family is not there for your birthday or like yes. i have missed graduations i have not been at other like fancy or not fancy but other mi- major, milestones yeah. like major milestones i have not been at maybe i had valid reasons maybe i probably i didn't but after a certain amount of like constant and consistent disappointment we can't Danica can't be surprised when people don't welcome this idea with open arms Mm -hmm. right and so you have to fight through it because you have to in in this case again take ownership of your part in that this is not something that Mm -hmm. they just made up I don't consistently reach out to all of my cousins right I don't know exactly where they are and this is not even like a I know people have people are like, oh, I have 65 cousins and like include all the peoples and, you know, on both sides of the family and all kinds of things. It's 13 of us. I'm the oldest one. And everybody lives in New York or Connecticut. Right. Yeah. Most people live in New York, different parts of New York, but most of them are there. And I haven't, if I'm being totally honest, like there are some cousins, that I don't even have their cell phones, like their cell phone numbers. And so I have to own that and be the one can't just be like, oh, so and so didn't call me. Mm-hmm. Like, did you call them, Candace? Ooh. You know, yeah, what no, I mean? no, you're right. I mean, commit, committing, commit. Yeah. So that's I've, I've pretty much taken the lead on that. So I've been committing to viciously stalking each and every one of my <laughs> with cousins. love, with and love it. It, it's it's a little difficult, but um, I am excited because I've made some segue with one of them who <laughs> most of the time ignores me. I so love it. it's it's awesome. Um, and I am, you know, I I she said, you know, trying to uh, fake it until you make it mm-hmm. kind of thing, um, where I just my feelings are like hurt, like some something some things have happened in the last like week or so. And I, you know, come to my sister and I'm like, you know, I'm really pissed off about this that this happened. And, you know, she's like, <clears throat> girl, just leave him alone. And I'm like, no, I can't. I, I'm committed to this. And she's like, well, you know, if you're going to commit to it, then, you know, brush it off. And so I have to brush it off, even though like the headache in the back of my head right now mm-hmm. is because of it. Um and hopefully like baby steps and right. they they will come around and what what uh what something that I've been doing while planning uh, planning along is that uh, we had a family fun day that I created um which was and, really awesome which was exciting and it was just amazing and it was like so heartfelt how we could bring you know n- not all 13 were there but you know parents were there and um a lot, most of us were there and we just there's this thing with the loofah and so like <laughs> you know I didn't um, even get it it was some kind of joke so we we had um all these family activities and everyone was competing and just like 
freaking out and it was it was very I almost heartfelt. lost a finger yeah she you know things are good when like someone almost almost someone dies. gets hurt like someone <laughs> yeah or someone gets extremely competitive and then you're like no you can't play or right. no you're cheating <laughs> like, that's when you realize you're like oh I didn't even know this about you yeah um so whenever I see Don I'm like okay Don we know how you roll so right. no cheating <laughs> and uh so like uh so yeah my- I think I almost had a concussion I think she ran into me like head yeah, first I think, yeah. yeah I remember it was, that it, so it consisted of okay so this is what we did uh we had i planned a family fun day it happened at kensico dam so it was outdoors and uh i invited everyone Mm -hmm. um and most most of them showed up so uh we had three games that we had to do a lot of them were like team building it very interactive Um, it was very much like uh in the fall when you go back to work not that you ever left work, but you know, like in the fall time where, where yeah. new people are coming orientation. on, orientation, that yes, kind of thing. It was like orientation. It was. It was like a family orientation. Yeah, I, I had to do a rundown. Just of don't all do the a activities. trust fall. Right. No yeah. trust fall. <laughs> it wasn't, yeah, it was borderline trust fall with the water balloons. Oh, um, yeah. No, that was just a water toss. Yeah. And so nobody was cooperating. <laughs> No one was You move back. No, you move back. Yes. People were cheating. I mean, I swear. That's family. <laughs> so that's cool. That's yeah. what's cool about family. So everyone... And now all of a sudden we have these stories, right? And mm-hmm. we have yeah. this story to talk about and it's fun and it's positive. And your kids are witnessing how right. committed exactly. you are to Exactly. And they a don't family. know any better. Yeah. They exactly. don't know any better. So this is um this is something that I've been doing and progressively working on tentatively. Um and so, you know, this thing with the loop so I had to go out I had to okay so I was with Jonathan in the morning and I'm like okay we're doing these game these games and we have to have prizes so we're in the dollar store dollar tree trying to figure out what we could use as prizes so I'm like we're in the aisle and in the you know the these random aisles and we're throwing things in a bag and I'm I'm like why don't we just put in a loofah like you know these bath things because I want to I want someone to be able to use it I don't want them it's right. a random toy and then they just throw it away so uh, I get into the bath aisle and I'm like, why don't we just get them like bath stuff? And Jonathan's like, what are we, get- why are we doing, what are we, what kind of message are we sending out to them that we want them to <laughs> that be? That you smell. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, you know what, fine. So he's like, whatever. Cause he's always like, all right, fine. We'll just go with your idea. So he threw in one loofah. <laughs> And, every- and then everybody was fighting over the loop. So we get okay, yeah. So we get to the activities, and I'm like, okay, you know, we have these games, and look, here's the game bag. And so I bring out all the stuff, and I'm like, hey, post its and headphones, and then I'm like, and this loofah, and like, everyone's loofah! like, I want the loofah. <laughs> so it turned into this big thing about everyone trying to win to get that loofah. Oh my god, it was great. So it was it was very fun. Um, I'm sorry, but you have to admit, like when your loofah goes bad and it's just like all like mm. big and saggy, that sounds weird coming <laughs> yes. from me. But and then then you get in the shower and you're like, fuck, I didn't go to Walgreens. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So everyone was rooting for that loofah. So when it came, when it was time to do the prizes, everyone was freaking out because they wanted the loofah. <laughs> Um, so that was really fun. And I thought that was like an amazing memory to establish and like an amazing yeah. like story. So then after that, we had lunch and then we had something that I created, which is the sticker award ceremony, which is where you um, uh, you can nominate someone for an accomplishment that they did. And you are acknowledging that they did they reached a milestone or, you know, something they did that you were you appreciated or you were happy for them. So, you know, it was like a sticker book of like random like robot stickers right? you know wasn't a trophy, it was the idea it was the just idea the idea was, so i you know got it started and everyone was really quiet and they were like and so i nominated a couple people and i from over the last couple of weeks where they were telling me things that they were doing and so eventually everyone started you know jumping up and saying oh you know what i want to nominate someone and so we kind of were able to have this open conversation about all of our accompl- accomplishments. And so it really, um, it was very heartfelt. It, it, I felt like we were coming closer together mm-hmm. um, and it was great and I really loved it. And everyone said, you know, Danica, you did a great job. You know, th- it was a great idea. Mm-hmm. So, um, so it was a great time. So now and she's scheduled quarterly family get togethers. So now we have, yeah. You should see Candace's <laughs> face right now. <laughs> Yes. It, so we. So I'm hosting the next one, but I said I'm not planning anything. So I hope you have a plan. Um. Yes. 
Oh, okay. Get it together. I'm going to say yes. Okay, good. Um, so now we have a family game night that's happening in the middle of the day at Candace's house. Um, yeah. Family Why don't game- we just name it something else? We're because always like family game night in the middle of the day. Because it, it's supposed to be family game night, but you refuse to have it in the evening. So it's happening in the middle of the day. But I have little kids. Exactly. And I live far so away and you all next, never go home. So next, whatever. <laughs> so next week we're having family game night that's happening in the middle of the day. And um, people will still show up at seven o'clock. That's probably going to happen. <laughs> um, I've had to start parties earlier and earlier and then people come later and later uh-huh. because like eventually I have to turn off the lights so my kids can go Candace, to sleep. Eventually. You showed up at Family Fun Day three hours First late. First of all, that's not true. You showed up two I and a half hours. I was one hour late. late. You show, she called when it was supposed was, to be starting and she's like, I'm not even going to lie. We're still in bed. And and I was like, not in bed. No, that's a lie. I have like, two I small even, kids. I, I was not in bed. I didn't even pick up the fried chicken. I didn't even pick up the fried chicken. Where do I go for this? I'm like, She's exaggerating. I have two we, small you don't kids have to defend yourself to me. We were, this, we I just were, whatever, record. whatever. We were sitting. We were sitting in the park waiting for everyone to show up for like two and two to three hours. Everyone, not just me. Anyway, whatever. So, but again, can you have to you you have to commit because people are not going to believe you. <laughs> people are not going to believe you, especially family, especially knowing whatever sort of history you have, but that just speaks to the point that you have to be consistent if you want this thing to work, even when the people around you are like actively trying to sabotage you. I feel like that's a thing. It is a thing. That it is definitely a thing. is a thing. Mm-hmm. I um, wasn't actively trying to sabotage, but sometimes family does actively it, sabotage. It does. It does happen. And uh, we're trying to promote within our family the ability to not actively sabotage which is hard <laughs> which is hard because we just want to walk away but um it, we we had this conversation which was really funny where i'm just like oh no this bitch did not just do this to my sister or like you know and she's like oh my god you're crazy but it's just like <laughs> i'm i'm like trying to figure out a way for us to to uh be able to be proactive and not you know, hold it against anyone and all this stuff move and, on. and move on, right? Move forward and progress. And, uh, it's, it's difficult, but it, it's very fun. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it's, it's fun. really cool. And I, I'm, I'm really impressed by you and your, like the, the grit that it takes to do this. And I'm, I, I don't say these things because my family is the worst. I think that my family again is like lots of families. And the thing that I appreciate about this more, a lot is is that moving forward i feel like if we start even if we consider it starting now right so something we were talking about before is that our family is pretty young right my mom is 55 our grandmother died early like there are not a lot of older people in our family a lot of like gra- mm-hmm. grandparents great grand so there's just a lot of history that i feel is lost and then on top of that we're disjointed yeah. so you know people are worried or like thinking about ancestry.com and 23 and me like i'm trying to figure out what my grandmother was doing in 1965 like mm-hmm. that's not that long ago but it's like i don't know and all i have are these stories that my mom tells every once in a while now they're the same stories over and over again because she's yeah like that that's how moms are (laughs) you know you're right i mean like it's completely crazy um thinking about my family like i was looking at photos the other day i'm like who's this guy right they're like that's your great grandpa i'm like i look exactly like him but i would not have known that yeah if my family wasn't as close as they are so it's important it's really important. And then we have the added uh, level of that our family is not like we are first generation American. My mom's from Belize. My dad's family's from Jamaica. There's um, there's a whole lot of family history that's that was lost getting here. Mm-hmm. Right. They're just a few like passports somewhere with like date stamps on it or a few black and white photos with like burnt marks on the edges. Yeah. Like they're just a few things. And I know that I, myself, I always feel this pang of jealousy when I hear people who are like, Oh, my family has been here since the 1700s or, I mean, they're usually <laughs> assholes, but some people have been able to sort of date back really far. And I am pretty sure, sh- like, I don't know what my grandmother's, mother looked like Mm -hmm. you know what i mean and 
I don't think that that is unique to my family, to our family. I, I, I don't necessarily think it's unique to black families, although it is very, I mean, again, with slavery and all of the things, it's, it's very real for our community that there's just not a lot of, of, um, kept history that's available for us. And there's only, um, verbal stories yeah. you know stories have to be told and if your family is not together enough to tell these stories exactly. or if no one is committed enough to tell these stories then they 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 get lost keep in, in mind you can tweak those stories to control those kids <laughs> yes <laughs> it's real definitely because there is def- oh, there was a story mom was telling and i was like why are you saying this in front of my son right now oh my please, god it's too much mom stories the story. are the worst although in it this usually involves some dead animal from her home oh country god. it's always like like I had a lamb, and it was, the, the lamb had a red string around yes, its neck, I and I loved the lamb. And my aunt was awful, and one day she just sent me into the barn, and it was knowing that it was slaughtered <laughs> yeah. with the red string still on. I'm just like, why? And she's telling that my is from 1962. Also, why? mom, that's a bad story. <laughs> yes, it's <laughs> yes. a bad story. But in it with with this. Um, new level of interest that my sister is putting into this it's making me think that i should i should listen to my mom a little bit more because she is she i think she is one of the the family members who is into this oral tradition even though she she may or may not know that that's exactly what she's doing and i often gloss over one because i've heard the story already Mm mm-hmm or because like I'm busy for whatever reason and it's just important to put a, a, a level of importance on these stories capture them if you will like record them so we have so many ways to record things now right. but really capture them come here come here right <laughs> but really capture them or at the very least to listen and and I think part of what Danica is doing is talking to family members that we haven't really been talking to or just like consistently reaching out to them and then listening and listening is what everybody wants to be heard. Yes. That's also something that I created. Um, we, I called it, <laughs> shut up. I call it the listeners and it's pretty much someone who is in our family that takes on the role of kind of like the therapist and you pretty much, uh, reach out to everyone in our family, even if it's a parent or like a in-law where you you kind of sit with them and you listen to what's going on with them um, just so that if they're not necessarily seeing a, a professional, that they still have someone to talk to. Mm-hmm. And um, I did that the other day when I found out that um, one of our, our, our aunts, our aunt's relatives died and we didn't know about it. And so I went over to my aunt's house and I, you know, was talking to her about it and I asked her, you know, who is this person? Like, yeah. It, with relation to me because you know my cousin just you know text me she's like my mom's in a mood she, her aunt just died and i'm like what aunt like, yeah how do i know who is this so i went over there and she went um she was explaining to me about you know, the history of this aunt and all of this stuff and um you know she was very sad because she died but she was also confused because it was like a estranged aunt who yeah like um you know part of our family is like white and part of like, or there are so many different. T- I don't even know how, to how you put those things together. Strange and white. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like it's hard to explain how our our culture is because, like, in within our culture, it's like the lighter you are, the better you are, the whiter you are. So she was it's like that book. What's that book? Which one? Oh my god! Uh, uh, tangent. Let's okay. keep going. <laughs> so I guess it explains this that so this aunt was like. Um, uh, the lightest aunt in the family. So she took on the role of being a white person. And so it was uh, a very strange relationship because um, between her and her younger sister, who was a little bit darker. And so this aunt, like, you know, raised her. And then at some point she married some white person and then like left and just completely ignored the family because she was playing this role as a white person it's a big thing um so she was like very sad and and that this person died but she was also like mad mad yeah you know because she had you know spent time with her but then she just took on this role where it was like you you don't exist anymore because you're not part of you know what i'm trying to be 
Hmm. So it was very interesting because then I got a, a perspective of the way her life she lived as she was a child and um, all the stories that I got, all, all the stories that she had when with, re with respect to how she grew up with my mother. Yeah. Um, and so she was going on and on and she had, you know, getting her perspective and then going back to my mom and telling my mom, you know, this is her perspective. And my mom's like, that is not what happened. <laughs> Let me tell you what yeah. happened, you know, and finding out like what, what everyone's story was and realizing like where the dysfunction comes from. So, um, so yeah, I've been trying to get into everyone's business and it's, it's, it's been interesting. It's been an interesting journey, but it's, it's been very helpful understanding what goes on with our family and how to overcome a lot of the disjointedness. Um, so before we wrap it up, I mean, like how would you sum this whole thing up? Um, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to sum up family. It's it's a um, work in progress. Uh, like a work in progress. It's always a work in progress, and it's a bit of a beast. Especially when I feel like the more you know about people, the more like the harder it is to manage whatever feelings or you know, everybody is petty and sad and broken and happy and like all of the things all at once is what makes up your family but it's the only one you have yeah. and i am guilty of in some cases when you feel, when i felt i have felt i'm trying to own things when i have felt like i wasn't getting what i needed from my family i turn to another right. instead of doing what danica is doing now which is try is like listen you're my family be my family right? like it's just yeah. like you have to and it, some people aren't in a place where they're strong enough to do that because they're sort of broken and sad yeah. but if you um really want it and can even if you're broken and sad can reach out to someone to sort of help you get back to your family um get your family to give you what you need then it's always worth it i i, I think a lot of times like People try really hard to break the mother child bond, but like literally nothing your mother does to you short of kill you is going to keep you from loving your mom. It's, right. Like it's insane, but it's like true. it's insane. Mm -hmm. But we can see it. Firsthand. Nothing that your parents do to you, really, especially your mom will keep you from like look from them being your mom and keep you from going back to them every time and i think that sometimes we need to sort of extend that to a few other people in our family and just rem and and remember one that family is family and that the the bond shouldn't be broken super easily and that there's always room for repair and there's always room for like restoration if you want it and if you try yeah that was it that's beautiful <laughs> Thank you. I try. Thanks. I try. I use the words. Um, you the, well, words. Danica, thank you so much for coming on and thank being you. amazing. Thank you. It's so, it's thank so, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm taking my, I'm taking it because I have been working nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working nonstop. I, I, I thank you. And I have been I admi it. admiring from far because I have not been working as hard. <laughs> It's real. So uh, you are welcome on the show anytime. Thank you. Uh, I will have, I'm sure I will have stories to tell after family game night that's happening in the middle of the day. Can't wait. Uh, <laughs> next week. Uh, just a reminder, I am not planning that. So I, I hope you have you, a plan. I got this. Okay, good. And um, so we're going to wrap up this this segment. Thank you so much for being here. I love you. Thank you. I love you too. Okay, so we're going to move on to our, um, the next thing we usually do is Mom So Hard Tip, and every week I say, oh, I don't really have one, and um, and I kind of didn't, but I do, I do. So a friend of mine is really into, my friend Jessica, who's actually going to be on the show in a couple weeks, I'm super excited about, she just wrote a, uh, just finished a program and wrote a research paper on nature play, and whenever I think about nature play, I think a lot about, like, dirt and logs, like, hmm. like tree logs, right? And I find it really super difficult to let my kids get super dirty because it's a lot of work. And you got to clean them. You got to clean them. Like you got to, like it's all fun and games until you've got to track all of that shit through your house and like figure out what to do. Outdoor shower. Right. So really that's what I need. But right now I have a hose. 
Yeah. And it's summertime, so I don't know what I'm going to do in the wintertime, but for now, as for now, my mom so hard tip of the night is it is summertime, probably w- mostly wherever you are listening to this. Let your kids go out and play and let them play hard. And so my kids had the best time yesterday. We had a major um rainstorm yesterday, and it created this huge mud pit that it's usually our digging pit and instead it was a mud pit and they were deep in this mud pit (laughs) and even a child in my program who doesn't like I mean he does he he finds when I tell you this kid I vacuum and this kid comes over and brings me the tiniest things and I'm like dude I vacuum stop it (laughs) you are shaming me (laughs) you're trying to shame me and I will not have it oh my god he did not like to touch dirty things, right? Like he's just, he's a, he doesn't like it. And he was knee deep in this mud pit and he was so happy and he was splashing and he had mud splashes on his face and the kids were just filthy. I mean, they were (laughs) filthy, but they had so much fun. And so my tip for this week is just to let them do it and to just step back for a second. Remember that you have water. Remember that it all washes out and that like it's summertime cabin fever for the winter comes around really fast. And so just enjoy the summer. There's also got to be something cathartic about spraying your kid down with a hose. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the little girl was like, "Oh, oh, it hurts." Uh, she said, "She said it stings," and I was like, "It's okay, you'll be fine." <laughs> That's for that thing you said to me earlier today. She said, first of all," and I was like, "Listen, don't you first of all me? <laughs> oh my God. Don't you first of all me?" But yeah, they're having. They are. We're spending a lot, a ton of time outside, and I'm trying. And I'm. I have created some with my friends, nature play, and all these things in mind. It isn't perfect. And a friend of mine said, oh, I see a lot of plastic in your yard. And I was like, listen, bitch, I'm doing the best I can. Right. (laughs) Like we still have play school stuff one thing at a time. But this mud pit, did you see my mud pit? (laughs) So let them let them be for this time, this time of this time of life, this time, this time in the year. But it's like the easiest time of year with kids, especially their home and cabin cabin fever in the winter time is one thing, but having your kids at home all day who are usually at school and now instead they're in your face all day asking you for something to do, like just push them outside and like let nice. them be. Let them be. <laughs> we have all kinds of like water tables and stuff. And for a while I was like, oh that belongs over there and this thing, don't take that over there. And it was just stressing me out too much. I was just talking too much. So now I sit under the the umbrella with the baby and I just chill and I let them play (laughs) and it just makes me so much happier mom so hard so let them be and let them get dirty and then talk to them about it later like whatever the not not about being dirty but just about (laughs) like whatever it is they want to talk about (laughs) Lincoln Lincoln got some new toy and when I tell you he thinks we care about this toy as much as he does mom do you want to transform this thing and I was like no (laughs) Put it in the mud pit. Like we bought it for you so you would transform the thing. Anyway, that's that's what I have for the night. Awesome. So are you good? I'm good. Okay. Well, I just wanted to say, Nick, thank you so much. Thank so you. much. Oh no, thank you guys. For being here tonight and helping. We couldn't go on without you. So Is this a bad time to tell you it wasn't recording? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. I will not even fall for it. I will not even fall for it. Because, of course, Tom, our regular uh, co-host and producer who's here every week, has already has already texted me 16 times in the background telling me to hurry up and wrap up. So he's yelling at me now, too. I know. So anyway, guys, as always, thanks so much for being here. And with that, we'll wrap up. Bye. This show is produced by Tom Ortiz at Digital Stream Radio. It's available for download on Podbean. Follow us at Facebook at Breezy Moms Podcast or email us at Breezy Moms Podcast at gmail.com. Until next time, don't stress, just breathe. <laughs>